Hello, welcome back to the Happy Heat Pump podcast. This is where Bean Beanland and I discuss heat pumps, everything about heat pumps. Why? Because we're interested in them. This is the place for you if you are thinking of installing one or interested in the transition to net zero in the uh, in the UK. Um, today, I'm going to get a little bit scientific, so this may be the one you skip. But look, we're going to talk about the secret sauce in the heat pump, the liquid, the magic liquid that makes the heat pump work. And there's a whole lot of them, and they all seem to start with a, a number R, or a code number R41A, hydrofluorocarbon bent blend. Um, bean. But look, tell us what makes what, a good refrigerant in a heat pump. Tell us what it's doing, first of all. So if we go back to our first episode, where we talked about, you know, how does the heat pump work? And we talked about this beautiful, simple piece of science. You know, you can't compress a solid, you can't compress a liquid, but you can compress a gas. So that's what we are compressing. And that is the refrigerant is the gas. Right. We're compressing it and making it hot. Correct. Yes. And so there are multiple types of refrigerant. There are lots of liquids, gases, liquids, gases, uh, that can be used as refrigerants. Uh, up until relatively recently, most of them have been chemical refrigerants, so man-made, effectively. Um, and they tend to have higher global warming potential and higher ozone depleting potential, yep. both of which are bad news. There is a move now towards natural refrigerants. I want to get more basic, though. Like The point of the refrigerant is... The point of the refrigerant is, is going to transfer... To, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's to transfer the energy from the cold side to the warm side, or of course in your fridge, in your house, your deep freeze, it's the other way around. The but thing is, we're heat pumps. I don't yeah. want to know I'm trying to take, I'm trying to get energy from outside and bring it inside. Yeah. So we are using this medium, the refrigerant, yeah. as, the, as the medium to transfer the energy from one side to the other side of the device. And in doing so, we are elevating the temperature from whatever we've got outside, whether it's air or in the ground or in the water, doesn't matter, to a usable temperature in order to provide space heating and or domestic hot water. When we send the refrigerant out in this, it's going on a giant circle, outside, inside, outside, inside. No, the refrigerant is... A, mm. The refrigerant in most instances is staying inside the box. So it's a hermetically sealed circuit inside the box. So we said... UK market dominated by monoblocks, the refrigerant stays in the monoblock. It doesn't go to inside. Okay. The refrigerant gets warm and cold again though, correct? Correct, yes. So as it goes around the cycle, we use the external source, energy, air, water, ground. We use that to effectively boil the refrigerant so it's gaseous so that we can then compress it. And in doing the compression, because of the laws of physics, we elevate the temperature. Right. Now, you've actually said the bit I wanted you to get to. The point of the refrigerant is we want it to boil at a very, very, very... At a low temperature. At a low temperature. Yeah. We don't want to have to heat it up to 100 degrees to get yeah. into gas. We want it to boil at minus 10 or something like that, right? Yeah. Minus That's 15, the... minus 20, minus because 25. Depends where the machines are going. You know, if they're going into you know, north of the Arctic Circle, you want them to a refrigerant that boils at a lower temperature. You, 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 you basically, though, you have a, a liquid that boils incredibly cold temperatures. Yeah. Well, yeah, well that's that, relatively cold. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that, well, compared to water, which yeah. is the only liquid I boil, yeah. really, it's, it's a very low temperature. And the point of that is, is that then you can let it, you can send it out into the cold air at minus 10, a cold, cold day, minus 10, and the water boils. The gas and you, boils. Because, the, refrigerant. But the, the refrigerant boils, yeah. not the water. The refrigerant yeah. boils. Yeah. And now you can compress it and make Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. So that, you really want something. So number one criterion is that it boils at a very low temperature. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Right. Now, apart from that, what else is good about it? What, what's bad and what's good? What makes a good refrigerant and a bad refrigerant? So the efficiency with which it operates is clearly important. And that's down to a number of chemical properties. And again, you know, you're now asking the wrong person to talk to you about the chemical properties of refrigerants. 
Um, but we're much more interested now in things like global warming potential and ozone depleting potential. So let's just talk through UWP and ODP. And what is GWP and what's ODP? They are sort of what they say on the tin. So global warming potential means that it's a gas which contributes to greenhouse gases. Okay. But you're not burning this gas. You're just right. You're giving it escapes. The key here is that if this gas escapes, so if you get a leak and it escapes, it's free to air. And in one machine, it's not a problem. But of course, if you've got millions of them, it's a problem. Right. Uh, and ozone depleting is, again, what it says on the tin. It was depleting the ozone layer. Uh, and we know that holes in the ozone layer have historically been bad news. Interesting, I read a piece fairly recently that said that the big hole that was sitting over the southern hemisphere was actually closing up. Now, whether that's because we're starting to draw back on some of these uh, chemicals, because they, they tend to be what people refer to as forever chemicals. So they, yeah. they sit up there and they're very, very long lasting. Nothing's forever, but they're very long lasting. Mm -hmm. you know, it's so like nuclear waste has a very long half life. They're yeah. quite well-constructed chemicals, which yeah. is quite a lot of. I mean, I asked ChatGPT to uh, produce me a list of refrigerants, R410A, hydrofluorocarbon blend, non-ozone depleting, high efficiency, non-flammable, very high global warming potential, 2088. I think that's high. Yeah, CO2 is kind of one, it's 2088 being phased out. R134A, Yep. Do you know that? Also being phased out. Is this how you talk yeah. about the heat pump generation? Oh, there you do. Yeah, 410A. Well, we would say 410A, not 410. 410A, uh, okay. R134. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are now moving. R134. Well, I'm, I'm giving them all a little hearing here. That one's non-ozone non depleting, suitable for medium and large heat pump systems. Again, a high GWP, global warming, and not as efficient. The one that is interesting... I'm going to skip through R32 and R407. The one that's interesting, do you know which one I'm going to say? Uh, uh, you're going to say propane. I am. R290, propane. Now, I think of propane as a gas that you burn on a camping holiday or something. like. And therein, that. Lies, the, therein lies the challenge with propane. So it's a brilliant refrigerant. Okay. But it's flammable. And because it's flammable, machines with R290 in uh, have to be treated slightly differently in terms of where we can put them, the size of the charge that we're allowed to use in a domestic setting, uh, because propane is flammable. Okay. Okay. So we've got to be more careful. It's a super refrigerant. And it has excellent properties in terms of global warming and ozone depleting uh, it, it impacts, but it's flammable, so we've got to be a bit careful. Now, the question... It's a good one to have, but it is flammable. Okay, and that's what it says here. But GWP of three, great thermodynamic properties, highly flammable, strict regulations, limit charge size. Yes. Now, the question is this. The gas we put in our gas main is also flammable. Okay, so we've already got buildings with large amounts of gas in them. The question I think that we need to start addressing is, should we think again about what the regulations look like around charge sizes of R290 propane in machines? Because we're now looking at the lesser of two evils. So should we be looking? Well, is there a better, is there something else that's not as flammable, it's almost as good? Is there a simple question? Yeah, so um, CO2 is an option, yep. but they tend not to appear in domestic machines. CO2 290 is definitely the, the medium of choice at the moment. Most domestic manufacturers have moved a significant proportion of their capacity to R290 because the other refrigerants are being phased out. If I'm installing a heat pump, do I need to take an interest in the refrigerant? Should I be asking R290? Well, I R7 don't think the most point. consumers should worry too much about R290, R410A, whatever it is. The only time it becomes important is that an R290 machine, propane, will out of the box provide for much higher flow temperatures. So if you have, let's 
make it simple, grade one listed building, can't change any of the radiators, you know you're going to need 70 degrees at some point when it's minus four, minus five outside. R290 allows you to deliver exactly that, 70 degrees, should you need it. So it's a high temperature refrigerator. But you may blow up your grade one listed building. Um, no more so than you would if you've got mains gas going around the house. It isn't, it's not like... Your, I don't know what quantity of refrigerant are you putting oh, into tiny. these things. Because we're not tiny. talking here about sort of 100 litres. Oh, no, okay. not at all. The charge sizes are incredibly small. Less than a pet. And I'm real to the pet. Oh, yes, 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 yes yeah. absolutely. I knew I should have boned up on something before I came to record this. Well, there was a time when I was installing, I had all this information about charge sizes. Uh, but the charge size in domestic heat pumps, bear in mind the average size of heat pump for the UK home will be 10-ish kilowatts, very small. Uh, the charge size in there is very small, very small, less than a kilogram. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, someone did flippantly say to me, someone in the industry actually, and he, yeah, if he does listen to these, he'll know who he is. I've got more R290 in my bathroom cabinet and on my dressing table than I would have in the heat pump because it's also a repellent of choice for aerosols. Interesting. I, I mean, but I, how did it take them so long? Because R290 is quite recent. And I just, how do they not know about it? It's like, well, they did know about it, but the flammability was, the, was perceived to be the issue. So we're saying better that we, that we have damaging chemical refrigerants than one that is flammable and explosive. Now, of course, we're saying, actually, we're not quite sure that decision was right. Better now that we move away from those chemicals which are potentially damaging for the planet uh, and go to somewhere else. Um, so very, very large, very large commercial systems are now using ammonia, which of course is poisonous. I've got ammonia, an inorganic compound, zero GWP, zero ozone depletion, yeah. high energy efficiency. But it's poisonous. And it needs careful, it needs careful attention. Toxic and flammable. Yeah. So very the long to certain metals requiring compatible. Yeah, so if you're building very large commercial machines, and we've got really, really good manufacturers in the UK using CO2 and ammonia, but they're building large machines, we're talking one and a half megawatts and, and above, uh, they know how to handle these refrigerants and they're getting great efficiencies out of them, but they need special attention. You wouldn't want to put them into your domestic building. Enough. There you are, the secret sauce in heat pumps, the refrigerants, all you need to know, more than you actually need to know, probably. Uh, Bean, thank you for that. Um, questions, comments, do email us, happyheatpumppod at gmail.com, or leave comments, particularly on YouTube. We do, uh, we get loads there, I do like to read them. And Bean and I will be back very soon with another episode of the Happy Heat Pump Podcast. <laughs>